Welcome back to another yet exciting episode of the Hollywood Bets. I'm your host, Ayanda Vezi, and with me is Dash Patap. This is the show where we bring you nothing but football as we bring you two mouth watering fixtures in the English Premier League. Dash, what's up, man? Hi, Ayanda. How are you doing today? I'm good, man. We have two fixtures this uh, coming weekend. Of course, it is the London Derby where Tottenham uh, are playing uh, against uh, Chelsea. And Lock leaders Arsenal who went back at the top of the table as Man City dropped points against uh, Nottingham Forest. Mm. They are traveling to Leicester City. What is your take on the first game, uh, which is Arsenal and Leicester City? Mm, it's going to be, a, I think, a difficult one. If you look at Arsenal's form, uh, they, they wrestled over a resilient um, Aston Villa outfit yeah. last time out. Um, of course, a six-goal drill and that one. And uh, Una Emery giving his former club no, uh, doing his former club no favors rather. Yeah. Um, so it was uh, it was made for riveting viewing, especially from a neutral perspective. Yeah. So uh, speaking of that, Jorginho obvious winning the hearts of the Arsenal fans. He, mm. he was very uh, important in that game, crucial, phenomenal for them. He even opened his account for Arsenal. In this game. Uh, do you see him continuing with that? Uh, even coach uh, Mikel Arteta said that uh, he needs to win the hearts of uh, Arsenal, Arsenal fans. fans definitely. Yeah. I do think that he will have a few more games from now until the end of the season. I'm not sure when Thomas Partey will be back in contention, but um, Jorginho just he's just footing like like a glove, hey. Eh? Yeah. Um, I know his, he might come up against um, Yuri Tillemans this weekend. I know um, against Man United. Tillemans came off the bench. Yeah. Um, he did have a bit of stability. Um, obviously, Leicester went down 3-0 in that fixture. Um, surprisingly, it was the Foxes' 41st Premier League goal conceded yeah. this season. Only Bournemouth have shipped more from all top flight clubs. So it tells you the Foxes are just conceding, conceding, conceding. So um, I think uh, with Jorginho, he would give Arsenal a bit more stability in going forward. Although I'm not sure if they're going to have anybody up top to apply the finishing touch. Edin Nketiah has blanked across his previous five fixtures, across all competitions. Um, you know, he's provided no attacking returns. Across his previous three league outings, no. he has attended 10 shots. However, none of them on target, mm. uh, missing four big chances in that spell. Mm. So uh, I'm not sure if he's actually going to get some minutes in this one. He might just be benched. And uh, I saw that uh, Gabriel has used his back at training with Arsenal. So do you think now that uh, has an impact positive impact on the club since you said uh, uh, in Kete in Kete been has misfiring. been yeah, yeah. misfiring. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how Arteta goes with his selection from now until the end of the season. I'm sure Jesus gets back into the starting lineup as soon as his match foot. I believe he's still a few weeks. I know he is training with the squad now, yeah. but I'm sure he's not match foot just yet. There's a long-term injury. But um, Smith Rowe was included in the match day squad yeah. that travelled to Villa Park last time out. So. I will be interested to see if he gets the nod ahead of somebody like Trossard or possibly even in Kete. I know that positionally he isn't an out-and-out -out striker, but there's so much fluidity between those players. Maybe he puts Trossard up front mm -hmm. and uh, Smithro on the, on the wide, Saka on, um, on the opposing flank and maybe Martinelli off the bench. Yeah. You, you spoke of uh, Yuri Telemanzi. We know at the beginning of the season he was linked with Arsenal. Can you hmm. say maybe this is game is it <laughs> this is audition, audition, yeah. a audition game? Definitely, I think that um, yeah he was heavily linked. And Arsenal are yeah. in the market for um, a CDM. You heard um, them hounding on Brighton's draw, uh, door, trying to secure the services of Moises Caicedo. Yeah, um, I think Tillemans was the their first choice pick um, at the at the during the summer. Yeah, but uh, follow that up with um, Caicedo, but. Obviously, they, they went with Jorginho yeah. and uh, yeah, he's went straight into the lineup. And what a signing he has been because Thomas Partey and Elneny is out. So it was a great signing by the club. And as you just mentioned, he did score. Uh, with Tillemans, I think there's another midfielder in the Leicester um, repertoire. Side, yeah. I think it's Madison. I think he's going to be, yes, yes, he's gonna be the, tell, um, the telltale for, for this fixture. Um, I know that uh, it is at the, the Foxes yeah. home stadium. Um, I'm not sure at the King Power. I'm not sure, like they haven't had the best of fixtures over fixtures, there. Yeah, yeah they, they in fact they've conceded majority of the goals on home soil. It's where they get most of their points on the road. So um, Madison has got nine goals and uh, five assists. So you know he's got 14 goal contributions and he has been injured for 
a few games this season. He has missed some appearances for Leicester. So I'm sure Brendan Rodgers is happy to have him back. Yeah. And um, it'll be interesting to see how, how he imposes himself in this yeah. game. I know in, in the previous their fixture against United, um, obviously they had a 3-0 loss, but um, I felt the scoreline wasn't a true reflection in that one. Okay. Um, I know Ian Nacho and Harvey Barnes both uh, tested the hair. In fact, they was, those are classified as big chances must, but uh, you know, Dave saves. Yeah. So uh, because of time, I want to jump into the London derby. Mm. Please give me your predictions between Leicester City and Arsenal. I'm going to go with a 2-1 Arsenal win in this one. 2-1 Arsenal win. Yeah. Wow. Uh, and they showed character in their previous game. So yeah. I might as well jump in, <laughs> in that trip with you. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we see Tottenham Hotspurs at the Tottenham Stadium yeah. playing against their rival. The last time these two sides met, there was a clash between obviously Antonio Conte, who's recovering, and Thomas Tuchel, who's of course no longer with the club. Mm. And you, uh, with, at the end of the game, we saw what happened there. Uh, you know, the London derby, it's always like, it's, it's a high a emotion fight, yeah, game. It's yeah, a so, ferocious affair. Yeah, so your take on this game? Um, look, you know, I, last time I was here on the podcast, I did mention the, the power of the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium and how Antonio Conte and his team um, obviously, Christian Stellini stepping in yeah. whilst he is away on um, on the injury, recovering yeah, from yeah. his illness. Um, I think that they are that that motto hasn't changed. You know that that blueprint. Let's try and get the maximum number of points at home and then see on the travels. Yeah. Um, the previous fixture was also a London derby yeah. against West Ham, and it would have been a huge confidence booster for the club. Um, you know, scoring two, putting two past West Ham shot stopper Lucas Fabianski. And they even beat Man City uh, on home, on home soil on as well. Home so soil, you can yeah. see there have been some really strong results, and I do think that trend continues here. Six of their previous seven home Premier League London derbies have been won by Tottenham. Wow! So you can you can imagine it is going to be a tall order for Chelsea to get anything from this fixture. Uh, Fraser Forster also picked up his second clean sheet of the year in Spurs colours, having played just four appearances for them this year. Um, of course, his first one was in a league against uh, West Ham. Yeah. So um, he's looking like he is um, going to step up in that Spurs team and maybe throw a bit of um, stones when when uh, when Lloris is back from injury. Okay. Uh, speaking of that, uh, also Chelsea side, they have not been doing well. They spend like lots of money signing uh, players. One would say Chelsea, yes, they did sign good players, but they are not showing like good results and. Uh, but however, the board is backing their coach, uh, Graham Potter. Yeah. Yeah. So, does this uh, uh, game, if they lose, it mounts uh, more pressure on the coach or, or, or even on the players as well? Yeah. It's uh, look, I would not want to be a Chelsea <laughs> supporter right now yeah. or affiliated with the club in any capacity. Um, they are going in a bit of a transition phase. Yeah. And, and that's putting it kindly, actually. Yeah. I mean, their previous um, home home league loss yeah. was against Southampton, and Southampton started the day at the bottom of the table. So it tells you just how bad things are going um, for Chelsea, especially at the bridge. Um, Southampton and actually have done the league double over Chelsea. Yeah. Mm. That's mm. yeah, I did not think that was possible. <laughs> um, okay. But yeah, they've they've actually uh, done that, and um, you know just. It just tells you where Chelsea are at the moment. They've only picked up one league, uh, one league win across their eight league fixtures this year. Mm. So um, and scoring just four times in those eight league fixtures. Yeah. So they are not. Um, you know, I'm not sure what's happening with the club. You know, there's no one there to apply the finishing touch. Yeah. So uh, do you think maybe Sterling will be like a key player coming into this game? Because there's there's so many attacking players. I'm just not sure if they need time or perhaps um, a more midfield presence. Um, I know uh, Reese James is back and, um, you know, he would be continuing that those attacks down the flank. Um, you know, Sterling is an out-and-out -out attacker. Yeah. So I'm sure we will be seeing more of him as the weeks uh, roll out. Um, but, you know, other than that, I, the, the, the team sheet is just so unpredictable right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, players are coming back from injury. It's going to be even more predictable come the end of the season when, when they, they because I know that they have confirmed the signatures of a few other yeah. European yeah. Uh, footballers. I know Christian Nkunku, Christopher Nkunku is Kunku, one of them. Yeah. So um, there's going to be a lot of competition in that Chelsea lineup. 
Okay. And um, I know they just need to start scoring. Yeah, you know, yeah. that's that's the end of the the conversation, really. Yeah. Uh, so give me your prediction. Um, look, Tottenham, like I said, they've they've got some incredible home form. Yeah. Um, you know, in the short term and in the long term. Um, so I'm gonna go with a Tottenham win in this one. I'm gonna go maybe. I'd say two goals to the good. Uh, I'm definitely backing you on this one. Uh, I also like back Tottenham. So uh, as you heard from Dash Patap, comment on our comment section. Tell us what you think uh, on this weekend's fixtures. Until next week, we're out. Cheers. For more soccer betting tips and previews, get the latest copy of Soccer Betting News for only 10 rand at your nearest Hollywood Bets branch or news agent.